ช่วงนี้ก็เป็นช่วงลัทธิการคือเวลาพบคำพระอาทิตย์อัสดง It's uh, it's the Rati Kala. It's the night time. The sun has set, and it's dark now. It's not so convenient for various kinds of activity, but we do have a quiet and secluded environment, and that's a good time to adapt ourselves to the practice. The passing of time is part of nature. And so, at this time, we can apply ourselves to developing peacefulness of mind. And with peacefulness of mind, we'll have a feeling of strength and power, and energy. Uh, the Buddha called this kind of peace, p a p a c h a going forth. It's the path out of. Clinging and attachment, and craving and stinginess, macharya. It's the path out of those things that tie us down, uh, all all kinds of attachments and obstacles. So do we develop ourselves and learn to adapt ourselves to ways of going beyond these things that. Uh, Pulling at us and holding us back, but we need to be steadfast and determined. We need to develop good qualities, like the good quality of the earth. We all rely on the earth, and it accepts all of us. The earth is solid and strong. It doesn't judge good or bad, and it accepts everything. Those things that we call trash. Or rubbish, we throw them out. We throw them on the ground, but the ground accepts everything. It doesn't. It doesn't say this is good, this is bad, this is positive or negative. It doesn't deny anything, but it accepts everything just as it is. So when we leave our home or our familiar place, we tend to. Become worried and uncomfortable, but we should know that this, all of this earth, is our living place, and we should accept this earth and this nature just as it is. This is the way that we learn to put things down and let go of things, to let go of our own sense of self-importance. Uh, we're going away from that. We're going out from that. This is p a p a c h a p a p a j a means to leave the place that one's currently in. So we're leaving and moving away from those feelings of constriction and a lack of freedom. We're working towards our own freedom. So the Buddha described this peaceful state as being secluded from all kinds of sensuality. That seclusion from Liking, because that delight in things takes away our freedom. It takes away our independence. That's the bad result of our indulgence. It ties us down, because um, delight and indulgence is that which ties worldly beings down. So we should see. And understand that nothing is ours; nothing belongs to us. We should look at all things in the way of a samana, as in the way of a peaceful one, at peace from self-importance and identification, at peace from attachment and clinging to things, and recognizing things as just arising phenomena. And thereby not allowing things to cause us worries. So this kind of going forth, or moving away, or moving out, is just like when the sun moves out from behind the earth and moves up into the sky. 
when the sun rises, everything changes, things become visible. And we can see and understand things the way they are when the darkness disappears. So that's naturally what happens. When the light comes out, the darkness goes away and all of our activities become more convenient. So we go out and move away from the Watu Karma, the, those material objects of sensuality. We throw them away and we put them down. And we put them down because they're heavy. And then we start to feel more of a sense of ease in our movement as we put down those heavy things. So we should look at it this way. We're moving out and away from all of those unwholesome dharmas as well. Moving away from the, the karma of the sensuality and moving away from the akusala dhamma, all of those unwholesome ways. Moving away from and out of the bhāpatamma, moving away from wrong and evil ways. Those ways that give us a feeling of unhappiness. We can notice where unwholesomeness arises. We can notice the way that it makes our hearts hot and heavy. We notice the defilement of mind. It's like dirty water. When water is impure, we can see that it's not clean. And so, working towards pure ways, we try to live like the Buddha, with the power of faith and wisdom. Satta jnana sampayutta. With the faith and the knowledge. With faith we have power and energy. As Bhutto, we're the one who knows, knowing the impure heart and the danger of the impure heart. So we need to know how to restrain our heart when it's moving in an unwholesome way. Especially living together, we restrain ourselves as a way of protecting each other. We have metta dhamma, loving kindness towards each other. We shouldn't hate other people just because they cause us to suffer. But we need to understand suffering as just an impermanent state which arises, exists for a while, and passing, passes away. Seeing phenomena as just arising and also passing away is called vipassana. That means knowing and seeing things according to the truth. When we see things clearly according to the truth, then that gives us a fresh uh, feeling of peace and lightness, knowing all things as not us and not ours. Um, this is the lightness of letting go, giving up. And that's called chaga, giving up all those things that cause harm and danger to our heart. Recognizing impurity in our own heart is necessary so that we can let it go. And so we need to watch over our heart. And the Buddha taught the practice of citta, nupassana, satipatthana. Setting a base of mindfulness on one's own mind to recognize the kusala and the akusala, the wholesome and unwholesome. And recognizing both as not belonging to us and not identifying with either as, as who we are letting go and putting down those arising phenomena in our own heart, letting them go, putting them down and giving them back. And, and that's chaga, is when we put things down, let them go. The more we let go, the more power and energy we have. That's the secluded mind. That's called citta viveka. So we've come to this place of practice, that's kaya viveka, seclusion of the body. And with citta we wake up, we have seclusion of mind, secluded from those akusala dhammas. So we should consider our practice in this way, so that we can understand the, the, the deep meaning of the practice of dhamma. Knowing that in all conditioned things, there are those positive things and negative things. They're just opposite, just in the way that the darkness has light as its opposite, where there's heat is also cool. So we recognize all phenomena in this way. And then seeing things as just arising phenomena that inspires more effort. We put forth 
the four great efforts. And the first of those efforts is just watching over and protecting the heart, not allowing those unwholesome states, not allowing the heart to indulge in those uh, desired and pleasant things, not, in allow not allowing the heart to get caught up in irritation at those annoying things, and not allowing the heart to get carried away with intoxication and indulgence, but recognizing those things in time and catching the heart in time, living in the way of one who knows, of an awakened one. Because the one who knows, the awakened one, the Bhutto, that's the fulfillment of the human potential. And that's the potential of a, a manusa, the, the potential to real, the, of realization that a human being has. So as we train ourselves, we understand more and more the value and the benefit from this very training and this very practice. So we have this peaceful seclusion, this kaya we wake up. And as we see the attachment and identification uh, that we have and abandon those habits, then we learn to look from a Dhamma perspective. We reduce our attachment to conceit and to views. We reduce our ways of clinging and craving and we stop looking at things as belonging to us. And we stop identifying thing with things as, as being who we are. We learn to become familiar with the sense of letting go and putting down, moving out, moving away. And our attitude is always one of letting go, putting down and giving up. This is our work, this is our kamatana. And uh, it's taught that we should do our work with a sense of emptiness. Even eating, we do that with an empty heart. And that's the way that one who's gone forth should eat food. And as we learn to do things in this way, that brings us to a, a state of fulfillment that state of upadi viveka, the state of seclusion from heat, not physical heat, but the heat of a heart which is covered up with obstructions. If we can let go, we have that peaceful seclusion. Uh, we already have a peaceful environment. We have a peaceful place. And we recollect the way that the Buddha was enlightened under a Bodhi tree in a peaceful and quiet place. But when the Buddha first sat under the Bodhi tree, he was still plagued with mental distraction, memories from the past, remembering the previous comfort that he'd enjoyed, where all of his wishes were fulfilled. And this upset his heart. And that's what we call Kilesa Mara. Yeah, that kind of Mara is not a physical or material thing, but these are those memories that come up and distract us and pull us away from a determined state of mind. And so the Buddha needed to set up his mind and he asked himself, uh, for what purpose did I come here? It's because I'm seeking freedom, because I desire to overcome the obstacles and obstructions. And therefore the Buddha, uh, the Bodhisattva, set up his mind and determined his mind to become enlightened. He said to himself, if I go back, people will say that I haven't finished my job properly. I haven't done what I came to do. And they will rightly lose faith and respect in me. So he set up that mental determination. And the determination that he made was a kind of marana Maranasati, a reflection on death. That's the tenth of the ten anusatis, the ten reflections. Reflection on death, the end of everything. And the Buddha determined that he would die 
striving for enlightenment under the Bodhi tree if that enlightenment was, was not achieved. He set the determination that even if his muscles and sinews would dry up and only bones were left, that he wouldn't cease his efforts until enlightenment was attained. And so those obstacles then, they faded away. There was nothing obstructing the natural power and energy and the brightness of mind. And with the power of concentration and the energy of piety sukha, that sense of fullness and contentment and satisfaction of mind, then the Buddha had that kind of mindfulness that comes from watching over the mind, taking care of the mind, recognizing that both good and bad things can arise in the mind. And we can have that same devoted effort. We can bring up that, we can bring up the inspiration for that effort as we do when we chant the praises of the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha. Praising those three refuges, those three perfect uh, refuges. This kind of chanting and uh, wholesome recollection of the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha takes away the mental hindrances, the five Nuvarana. And the Buddha taught and explained those five mental hindrances of karma, chanda, uh, distracted thinking about sensuality, payapada, ill will, Tinamita, the drowsiness and sluggish mind, Utacha Kukucha, the restless mind, and Vichikicha, the mind that's full of doubt. So recognizing these hindrances, we apply effort to a mind that's free from hindrances. And we can achieve that by practicing in a way that's not heedless, by bringing together all of our attention and not being discouraged in the practice. So in this night time, we apply ourselves to the practice of developing this goodness. We chant the virtues of the Buddha, which means a well-developed human. Not talking about a material state, but the development and fulfillment of those good internal qualities of one who has followed the path of the four kinds of noble beings, whether a bhikkhu, bhikkhuni, upasaka or upasaka, whether one's an ordained man or woman or an unordained uh, man or woman, female or male practitioner. Uh, because what we're talking about is not uh, the monastic robes, but a state of being well practiced. Supatipano, one who practices well. Ujjupatipano, one who practices directly. And Nyaya Patipano, one who practices seeing the danger of the rounds of samsara and rebirth. So this is the treasure of one who follows the footsteps of the Buddha with faith in the enlightenment of the Buddha. One has the treasure Firstly, the treasure of the purity of moral conduct, sila. And the second treasure of not believing in superstitions. The third treasure of having confidence in putting one's effort into wholesome action. And the fourth treasure of not putting one's effort into those things that don't lead to the fulfillment of the path, but giving up those wrong ways. And with faith, and effort applied to the teaching which leads to the full development of a human being. So we support ourselves in this practice, we support each other and we forgive each other of our shortcomings because we understand that all of us have our different uh, abilities, different, we're at different levels of development. As fellow human beings we're the same but we express ourselves differently even though we're the same, we all look and sound different. And this is called vipaka. It's the results of kamma. In the same way, we can experience the results 
of our wholesome development. We must try to recognize our own weaknesses and accept correction from each other so we can live mindfully as one with satipanya, mindfulness and wisdom. So pavana maya means developing, uh, means the meritorious way of developing the mind, cultivating the mind. And this is the treasure of one who's dedicated to fulfilling the potential of a manusa, a human, of one who's living and abiding in the uh, wholesome dhammas of loving kindness, compassion, uh, and uh, sympathetic joy and equanimity. Metta, Karuna, Mudita, Upeka, the four Brahma Viharas. And so we live, we can live together in peace and happiness, and our society can be solid and stable, free from harm and danger if we live in this way. And so therefore we will come together to take the opportunity to create this great benefit, to work towards developing the greatest benefit of fulfilling the human potential. And we're all together expressing our intention to do that together. มีโอกาสมาพบปะก็ถือว่าเป็นการแสดงออกในรูปแบบฟังดีเจตนาดีร่วมกันอันธมยังธรรมกถายาสาโดคารังดาดามาเสสาโดสาโดสา